Hello everybody, this is Sparkman. Yes, I'm still alive. I'm still here. Uh, I've been uh, too busy to really do any videos lately, so... Uh, but uh, I just wanted to do a quick little thing, uh, just to kind of show what I've... Uh, something I'd been working on for a while. This is actually a second prototype. I had some issues with the first prototype and just gave up on it. It just wasn't even worth it. So what what we have here is we have a digital password keypad entry system to uh, open a, a door. So, um, so we've got a couple of cool things about this. One of which is that these buttons are all right up against each other. There's no gap between them at all. Uh, but despite that, they all send a separate signal. There's no uh, crosstalk between them. Uh, I give uh, Wood credit for kind of showing me that design on his videos and then from there I kind of figured it out uh, ironically he put out a tutorial right about the same time I figured out how to do it uh, but yeah I'll, I'll link his channel and you can go check it out uh, he does a lot of cool stuff he figures out a lot of cool redstone and different other kind of mechanisms and things um, so anyway this keypad is used not only to enter the password to open up the door. It is also used to program the password. So there's a button inside that you can set it in uh, programming mode to uh, program a new password in. Um, so, so let's go ahead and try it. So you can see the uh, key, keypad layout is right here. Standard keypad layout. Um, so you got one. Notice this torch goes out. Two, three, and four. Wow, that was predictable, right? That's the kind of password an idiot has on has on his luggage. Look that one up, kids. All right, and close the door once you're inside. And now we have a password set button. So we hit this button here. This torch lights up, indicating that we are in password set mode. These uh, pressure plates will always work. They're just for exiting out through the door. All right. So now uh, the enter password now light is lit again, but this time it's in password set mode. So we can go ahead and set up password other than something stupid like 1234. So it'll be 9, 7, 1, and 3. Okay, the light comes back on now, indicating we're ready to enter our password. So if we try our first password, one, two, three, four, it's, well, it's not going to open, is it? No. And the light comes back on, indicating it's ready for us to enter our password. Okay, let's enter the correct password this time. Nine, seven, one, three. And we have the door opening. Fantastic. It works. Awesome. Close our door. All right, so how, how it works. So the first thing is the uh, the keypad, which is pretty cool. Uh, the way this is, all the signals are separated is uh, through some, basically some redstone torch magic, uh, magicness here. Uh, separates all those signals out. And then over here, uh, I lay out each signal individually for each button. So if you look, you have, uh, they're not in order or anything, so I have signs on them to tell them which one's which. And then down here, what this section is, this converts the button signal into a basically a binary number. Uh, if you understand binary numbers, you can understand this completely. If you don't, well, it's uh, just believe it's a binary number. All right. Okay. This line right here is to detect that a button has been pressed. So no matter what button you hit, this line always turns on. Okay, this acts as our clock signal 
for the uh, the circuit basically. So when you push a button, something's going to happen. Okay. Uh, whereas, like, if we look at button zero, where is button zero? It is this one. This one right here. So if we look there, uh, there are no torches getting this signal up to the top here except for the clock signal at the very end, which is this one here. Okay? So that's the purpose of this, is to convert it into binary number. Okay, so we have our binary number. comes over here um, through this mess. Uh, essentially, well, let's go to the, uh, the next section over here, actually. This here is uh, basically a kind of counter that uh, helps me keep track of or allows the signal circuit to keep track of which digit you're entering. So if this is lit, you're entering the first digit, second digit, third digit, and then fourth digit. And you get a reset line to reset it back to digit one. Uh, for instance, when af after you've entered all all four digits. Okay. Now this monstrosity over here that kind of looks like a bunch of weird antelope or something. Uh, these are all RS NOR latches. The RS NOR latch actually is just this part right here. And there's a total of 16 of them. Uh, 16 because to hold a digit in binary from 0 to 9 it requires 4 bits. So each RS NOR latch is a bit. And then you have 4 digits so you need 4 times 4 which is 16. So each of these lines here, so this is the line, this is all four digits for the first, um, all four bits I should say for the first digit, all four bits the second digit, all four bits third, and then fourth. And then you can see at the bottom, or on this side I kind of label things, this right here is a reset line, that resets bit three, this one's bit resets bit 2, resets bit 1, and resets bit 0. I'm kind of hurrying a little bit because I don't want to run out of daylight and have to pause the video or whatever. Alright, so basically all this extra stuff above and below the RS NOR latches is to select, uh, first of all, writing, which bit I'm writing to, and then up here, which bit I am reading from. So... Uh, depending on which, whether I'm looking at the first, second, third, or fourth digit in the sequence, it selects it. You can see this torch is different from these other three because this uh, first bit is selected or first address is selected. Right here we have XOR gates. These XOR gates, the purpose, and this is a clever, clever little piston design for XOR gates to make them pretty small. Um, basically, it's to compare the um, memory, uh, this, this is a memory cell, compares the output of the memory cell with the, uh, what button is pressed when you're uh, checking for the password. So there's four of them, one for each um, bit in the address, so you compare all four bits at, at once. Ooh, we got some bad lag there. That's not good. And then down here, um, this is where the clock circuit really comes in important because you only uh, want to compare the output at certain time. Otherwise, if you're comparing while you're switching memory addresses, uh, you can get some false data, basically. Uh, it's hard to explain. Anyway, um, it does work, so I promise you it works. Uh, so this is another RS NOR latch right here. It keeps track of whether you made any mistakes in the password or not. Um, if you didn't make any mistakes, this will stay lit the whole time. And then this is a three-way uh, shut up um, and gate. And um, so when uh, you're in password reading mode or basically password entry mode and you have your password is correct and you've entered in the last digit 
this will light up and open the door, which is this RS Norlatch here, which I forgot to put a sign on, uh, and we're running out of light, but that's pretty much it. So uh, I'll put the link to the, I'll, I'll put the uh, this available for, for download and put a link to it in the description if any of, uh, of you would like to play around with it, try to figure out how it works um, in case my description is uh, too confusing which it probably is, but, uh, yeah, and it probably could be smaller, to be honest. I, I don't really, I'm not like a, a circuit engineer or anything. I just based it based on what I know about uh, computer design, how computers work and such. So it's basically a kind of uh, mini computer with, uh, you know, just memory storage and then memory retrieval. And uh, and then a simple comparison system to compare what's in the memory with uh, what's being input. Anyway, I uh, hope you like this. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, um, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, uh, and be happy. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'll uh, see you guys when I see you guys. Later.